The instruments I've shown you just, just now are the old uh, drop handle instruments, which have been modified to have block controls added. However, the LNER had some instruments which were designed to have welling control from the start. And these were these rather smart uh, double needle instruments made by R.E. Thompson. Um, they're not common and they're not common in photographs of signal boxes either. But I'll show you inside, you'll see that they have all the extra contacts and relays for welling control, so take that off very carefully. If you look at this one, you've got your two relays. That's 1000 ohm, that's the LCS, that's 200 ohms, that's the BCS. Um, and you can see all these additional contracts, contacts built in from, from the start. The TPS is separate again. And these instruments come in both versions, both the ratchet version and the rectifier version, if I can call them that. Um, this version is a ratchet version. You can see the ratchet there. If I go to line clear and do the, turn it back, you see this ratchet lift. That's the ratchet version. I can show you it working. Um, I'll just, I'll have to, I'll have to reset the LCS first. There we go. Line clear, train on line. There. You can't get another line clear until you've occupied and cleared the track circuit, which I'll just do with that switch. And you get another line clear. And you've got track circuit control and signal proving as usual. There are also the rectifier version of the instrument. Here's a nice example. Screw it. They're very smart, these instruments. They're nice and compact and uh, quite attractive. You notice it's double line and there's a tapper for the bell, although the bell itself is a separate unit. This instrument, you'll note, um, dials up and up. That's interesting. Take a look, look carefully. Look inside. There you are. It's the other way around. That's 200 ohms LCS. And the other one at the other side is the 1000 ohms. Well, it's BCS is 200. LCS is, is the 1000. Um, and it's got a rectifier, which is hid there. You can just about see it's hidden. There's the rectifier. So that's the rectifier version. Now, another nice thing about this instrument the lid back away is the delights of firing block instruments is that uh, it's always nice to know where they come from and just occasionally I mean you get them with plates on sometimes but this one's a delight because it has got the back he says I'm doing it oh the cases by the way are often locked there's a padlock on there originally mm to stop people, stop unauthorised access, fiddling with them. And see, they don't want people getting in the middle, right? He says, um, oh, heavens. That's because I've, hang on, because I've done this thing. I've fastened it in, that's my fault. Hang on. Okay. I'll get there eventually, that's it. Right. I didn't want anybody getting into that, no hurry. This is a delight, particularly a delight, this one, because it's got a full set of wiring tags. It's always a delight to find that. I can work out where it's from. It received and dispatched trains on the upline, which is unusual. It received trains from a place called WN. It dispatched them to a place called Hat 2. And so we can state with complete certainty, this is from Welling Garden City which is rather nice for a block instrument with welling control. Obviously, this is a later one. It wasn't involved in the accident. This came much later. Um, the photographic evidence shows that they're not common, these instruments, but there seems to have been a bit of a concentration of them at the bottom end of the East Coast Main Line. Um, they seem to be a bit more common down there. Well, I have seen examples elsewhere. <coughs> Another thing interesting about them is you can date them. I mentioned before the relays have got dates on. And this one is, I'll tell you. It's interesting. 
all the Thomson instruments, be they ratchet or, re or, or um, rectifier type, have a the relays have a narrow range of dates, 1942, 43 or 44. The other instruments, which have been modified, have a much wider range of dates. Um, the ones according to the standard wiring diagrams, the earliest one I've got, two relays dated 1942, that was the permissive one you saw earlier, <coughs> and all the other relays, there's all, all sorts of range of dates up to about 1960. So, the diagram you remember was dated 1940. So, I'm not found one that early yet. But these are interesting because they were built with welling control from the start. Um, the other ones were modified. And these seem to seem to, these seem to stem from a rather based on eight samples. Statistically not very large, but they seem to all come from a rather tight range of dates. The other ones seem to be more spread out. And interesting, there's no correlation whether it be rectifier or, or, ratchet. or ratchet type. It's a complete mixture of relays. Another little quirk about the Thompsons while we're on them. They all, this has got a tapper, they all originally had a plunger. I'll show you one with a plunger, if you stop it for 10 seconds. evidence that all the Thompsons I've seen originally had a plunger. This is the only one I've found or have which has a plunger. It's got a plunger, not, not a tapper. And you'll see we can tell where it's from. It's from the, the Wordsborough branch um, near Barnsley. So that's got a plunger, a plunger on the back, isn't it? Lettered contacts as usual. Other variations. Here's, here's an interesting one. They're, very, they're heavy, these. That one there. Uh, I'll put this out of the way. Look at that one. What's it made of, John? What do you think? That's uh, Bakelite. It's Bakelite, yeah. It's not wood, it's Bakelite. Different version. Um, I showed you the track circuit control with the, according to the standard wiring diagrams, much like the signal proving control, it appears there was a version which was earlier. Here's an example. Pity about the needle unit, uh, rather well, poor condition, but if you look at it carefully, it says train enter section. That was great northern practice. Metal box on the back, the relay. I won't take it off this time, they're rather fiddly to get on. Most of it's all right. Needle works. <laughs> two contacts this time. Just like the two contacts on the ones with the, st the standard wiring diagrams. So that looks like it was signal proving control and track circuit control, the early version. Things moved on with block instruments. The Thompsons weren't very common, but the LNER, these certainly were. It's called a, a black box instrument usually or occasionally a porthole instrument, for obvious reasons. It's got a different commutator. It's a rotary commutator. All right. It's made by Tyre & Co. If you look inside... A pain to open these, huh? There we go. That's it. The arrangements are different. There's a, instead of the lettered terminals, you've got a number numbered terminals. It's a combined instrument, bell, both needle indicators, as later instruments often were. One, and three, one two, three of the bell. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are the pegging part of the instrument, and the top two are the um, non-pegging part, the top needle. There's no relays in here because it was made to work with an external relay unit which I think is the way it's more normally done these days. In fact, if you look at the wiring tags, I can't say where it's from, sadly, but there's a reference to BZR, Block Special Relay, um, which is the actual relay unit that does, the, that does the, bl the block controls. So that's a more modern instrument. These were quite common on the eastern region. The Woodhead route, on the eastern part of the Woodhead route, these were found nearly everywhere. From our point of view, from the historical perspective, it's interesting that some of the early single needle drop handle blocks were modified to work with this circuit. Just use the battle for a minute, putting it on, which you don't need to film. Uh, 
So we can mention in passing that some of the older instruments were modified to work with the newer circuits. This is a drop handle block. You can tell where this one's from. This is from Hadfield West. Um, if you look on the back, it's a great central block off the woodhead route. It's a half height back box, so I call that one a half height one. You take it off. It's all a complicated mechanism, but you've got the both the original A, B, Y, Z terminals, but also the four, five, six, seven, eight to work with the BZR unit. And that's quite a lot of modification, that, to get the, get the, get the, get the required contents. That's one example. I've seen another one like that, which, like this one, was off the London Midland region. Here's another instrument. Nice, smart, nice, good condition. Look on the back. A small box. And take it off. And says, sorry, the four, five, six, seven, eight, nine terminals. If you look on the inside, you can see how it does it. There are vertical spring contacts, a bit like the early ones, really. So you move the con from side to side, you open and close the contacts. Mm. So that's another way of obtaining the same circuit. Um, I can't help thinking, whoever had this, came up with this design, came up with a simpler design, <laughs> possibly. I don't know where this is from, though. So that's another version. Some of the variations I've found, which are interesting. Sometimes things are not as they seem. You've seen this one before, the track circuit control. However, if you look at the back, what do you see? You see two relays, an LCS and a BCS for line control. But it's not. Apart from the fact, why would you have welling control for a permissive section? If you look carefully, there, underneath all the dust and grime, those contacts will be shorted together. Ah, yes, they are. Well, in control has been bypassed. So it really is just a track circuit control instrument now, with home's proving, signal proving. Yeah. And you can also see there which, which of the contacts were used. Um, C, D are the signal proving. Uh, e, F, G are the, E, F is, is the track circuit control. H, J picks up the... TPS once it's dropped, when you put the comm in the right place. But KLM for well in and not used. So that's a little variation. Here you find very odd things. This is an interesting instrument. It was in the auction catalogue as a tyres F-type Scottish region instrument. It's true, it is a tyres F-type instrument, and they were very common in Scotland. Hang on a minute. Down and down. Doesn't sound like Scotland. Tapper. And it certainly is not Scottish. When you take the lid off, and you find inside. Leighton. <laughs> That's not Scottish. That's from the bottom end of the East Coast main line. We do know from photographic evidence and surviving instruments. Some boxes at the bottom at the southern end of the GM main line had these instruments. Seems surprising, but they did. If you look at pictures of Holloway North Down, it had a full set of them. That opened in 1948, and there were some others in the area as well. I don't know where this one is from at last. Look at the back, it gets better. What do we have? One LCS, one BCS. It had welling control. I'm not saying it's best. Not, it's seen better days. That's fallen off there, and uh, and there's a ratchet mechanism down there, which I don't think works anymore. You can just about see it, and some of the metal works turning green. But it's still a very interesting instrument. But even then, there's more to the story. C, D are actually not shorter. E, F are shorted, so that's no track circuit control. And the welling is, I think that's shorted out too. I think. It's not the easiest way to tell because it's not the best condition. Uh, I can't tell. I don't see how you could have welling control if there was no track control. So that's a very interesting instrument with several layers of history. Um, 
we do know that the, from pictures of Holloway North Down, they originally these instruments there had plungers, and then they got changed to tappers. Seems the, it seems the Eastern Region didn't like plungers, a bit like the Thompson instruments. And then it had welling control added, and then it had welling control taken off. So, a very interesting instrument, even though it's not in the, it's, uh, the best condition. One. So, I hope you've enjoyed that uh, ramble through some block instruments acquired over the last 20 years of collecting. I'll finish with a puzzle. I showed you how the, the ones corresponding to the standard wiring diagrams for signal proving control and track circuit control. There were, appeared to be earlier versions. Got here a book um, which Railway Signaling and Communications and it's dated 1941 but there's no, uh, there's no author, bizarrely. Uh, the author seems to remain anonymous. But it's very clearly a London and North Eastern Railway uh, bias. And there's a section on block instruments. And here you have a diagram for the... It's a bit more, a bit more pictorial, but you see there the two vertical spring contacts for track circuit control of the needle, like you can see from here. So there they are. The diagram, there they are in real life. However, if you turn the page, there is another diagram. Oh, oh the wind's turned the page for me, it's all right. <laughs> another diagram with three contacts for, well, what we now call well-in control. One acceptance block with the release by train, what we now call well-in control, with three vertical contacts. So, was there originally a well-in control block like this, but three contacts? I don't know. I've never found one. <laughs>